Nothing but the blood of Jesus is correct. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and all the blessings that you have given us, Lord. Today, Lord, we ask you to open our ears, Lord, that we may hear. Lord, open our hearts that we may take you in. Lord, open our hands that we may serve you. And Lord, guide our feet as we journey with you down the path you are leading us. Lord, all of this and so much more we pray to you. And all God's people said, Amen. We are starting a new series this week entitled Share Christ's Peace. The idea of what that looks like in our life, and especially coming off of our Masterpiece series where we discovered what our gifts were and who we were, it's a great way to see how we can use those gifts in God's kingdom. So this week we are sharing Christ's peace where we learn about doing it every day. Next week we're going to learn about share Christ's peace at work and at school. The following week, Mother's Day, it's rather fitting that we learn about share Christ's peace at home. Mom, that one's for you. And the final week on the 19th, we learn about share Christ's peace at play. Today we are talking about those sharing Christ's peace every day. Now, as I was thinking about this and putting this, this message together, I started thinking a little bit about important things in my life and the stories that go with them. And it only led me to one specific place, and that is Avengers Endgame, the movie. If you don't know me, this will make sense. If you do know me, you're rolling your eyes and saying, really, again? But here's the thing about this movie. Now, this movie has been 11 years in the making. It's covered three different phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's covered all kinds of characters and character development and, and all kinds of stuff in comic books and in movies and in games and all kinds of stuff. Probably many of you are like, I don't understand a word he just said, but that's okay. Well, there's one thing that's going along with this movie is as it was getting ready to roll out and as spoilers were being released by people on the internet, the Russo brothers, the directors, wrote a letter. And actually, it's, you can see it here. I know you can't read it. But they wrote this letter to all people. And basically, the gist of this letter is, we know you're great fans. We know you've been with us for 11 years. We know you've been there from the beginning to the end. We know that you have shared your theories, your thoughts, your hopes, your dreams. We know you get in spirited dialogue with other people, and we thank and respect you for that. But what we really want you to do is remember, don't spoil it for anybody else. Don't tear the, share the story. Don't, don't ruin it for somebody else, just like you wouldn't want them to ruin the story for you. Hashtag Thanos deserves your silence. Thanos is the bad guy from the movie. And um, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go. It was amazing. No spoilers. But I was thinking about that and how they're talking about don't share the story. They have this awesome story that they spent three years putting together, and now they're telling everyone when you go see it, don't tell anybody. Don't talk about it. Don't, don't be excited about it. Well, you see... It kind of led me to our big idea of the day of we're children of God and man, do we have a story to share. We've got this amazing story to share of who God is and what he is in our life and how he has affected and brought us to where we are. You see, we are part of God's family. We are brought in at baptism. We are part of the people that he has made us to be and we are unique in that in fact, in our reading for today from Romans 8, it talks about this. And now I want to I step back for a second because we're family in Christ. And our youth today in confirmation uh, put together a video that talks about this and what Jesus means to them in their life. And so what I invite you to do is watch as we watch what our youth, our confirmands, think of who Jesus is to them. Jesus to me is my one and truly Father and how he died on the cross for my sins. Jesus to me is a man who gave his life for us so 
that our sins can be washed away, and he loves me no matter what. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and I'm, uh, sorry, uh, and a level of perfection we can only aspire to be. To me, Jesus is my personal Savior, and even though I sin every day, he washed all the sins away on the cross. To me, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and he sacrificed himself on the cross that I may have eternal life in heaven. To me, Jesus is the creator of everything who came down from heaven and died for us so we could be with him. We don't deserve that. We deserve hell, death, and separation from him. But he did it anyway. I appreciate that. Uh, I think that Jesus is my savior who came down from heaven uh, so he died for us and then um, beat the devil down in hell and then came up, uh, rose and then ascended to save us. I see Jesus as my helper and I think that he will help me through life no matter what happens. Jesus is my um, savior and leader through my faith. Parents, I'm just going to tell you, it's great to stand up here and watch the youth as they see those videos because you get all of this. Oh, gee. It's, it's pretty funny. But we are part of God's family. We're all part, part of Jesus and what he means to us. And, and in our reading for today in Romans 8, it, it says this. I mean, even in verse 15, it says we are adopted by God. We're adopted. You know what that means? That means he chose us. He picked us. He adopted us into his family. And it goes on to say, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. We're part of that family. We're part of the family of believers. Isn't that amazing to think about? And then Romans 8 goes on here. It says, now we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may share in his glory. Just like when I went and saw the Avengers movie and I, I was just, I basked in the glow of this movie. We also get to bask in even greater glory in God's glory through Christ. You see, as children, we have this family that we're together in, in Christ, and now we get to go and share that glory and be that glory to others. You know, it says in, in Acts 1, verse 8, it says that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the age. He is calling us to do that. He is calling us to walk with him because we are part of his family now, i have i have two daughters uh one's in college one's in high school and, and i'm a child of a family and I'm, I'm assuming that most all of you are children of parents and somebody got that all right my kids hated that i became a pastor because we have a saying in my house that if someone does something weird, the saying is, there's a sermon in that somewhere, and they are going to appear in a message that I give at some point in time. And it's great because they get disgusted with it, but I got so much sermon material. <laughs> My parents are the same way. My, I spend a lot of time with my dad and his brothers, and I hear all of their stories. And I can't wait to share these stories with other people, and they can't wait to share them with me when I go with my uncles and my dad on trips. They share all of these stories, like when they taught my dad how to swim by taking him on the farm pond and kicking him out of the boat and saying, see it shore. The... The time my, my uncle made my aunt angry and he said, hey, pass me the hammer in the farm, and she did, and the claws stuck right here when she threw it. Yeah, I know. That's what I said, too. My Uncle Don's always been messed up a little bit. 
But the idea is still there. These stories we get, we share. We have them in our families. We get to share them with others. We get to share them inside the family. And that's the most glorious thing in the world. And now that we are part of this family of believers and we're part of God's family, He wants us to go share that story, those stories with everybody else. You see, I've got a, sh a story to share. A story that started from the moment that Adam and Eve were created till this day, this moment, this time. It's the story of Christ. Now, Confirmance, you guys have a story too. You each individually are unique. There is no one else on this planet like you. Your parents may think sometimes that's a bad thing. They may also some days think that's a good thing. But the fact is, is your stories are stories that lead people to Christ. Now, how do you do that? I am not asking anyone to go on the street corner, grab their Bible, and start preaching the gospel. In fact, people look at you like you're weird when you do that. But there is a way to do that, and it's just by being Jesus to people. It's, it's by smiling. It's by giving a hug. It's by shaking a hand and saying, how are you doing? It's about being that light for others in this world. Let me give you an example. I, I, as, as some of you may know, um, I, go, I go to the Y every, every morning. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gym rat. And I get to meet a lot of people there who are not Christian. And you know how conversations go when you meet someone. Hey, how are you? Hey, what do you do? And, you know, hey, I'm retired. Hey, I drive a bus. Hey, I do this and this. And then they look at me and they ask, what do you do? I say, I'm a pastor. And they go, whoa. And they all step back. I got to watch what I say. That's usually the next comment that they make. But it's interesting as you develop those relationships, what happens? It's interesting as you talk to people, and you don't have to say the word Jesus ever. But people realize there's something different. Case in point, uh, one of my friends at the gym said his, his daughter was going in for surgery and he was really worried about her. He looks at me and tells me this, and he is an atheist. He looks at me and he says, my daughter's going to the hospital for surgery. I said, I'll pray for her. And he goes, thanks. I appreciate that. I had another man come up to me and tell me that his friend had a premature baby that they weren't sure if it was even going to survive. And his words to me were, I, I, I don't know if you could, but, but, but could, you, could, you, could you ask the big guy for some help? I smiled and I said, let's pray right now. What? I said, let's do it right now. You see, those little actions, those smiles, your mannerisms are part of your story. And that's part of how you share Christ's peace with everyone. That's how you guys can share Christ's peace with everyone on your teams, at school, in everything that you do. That's what it means to share Christ's peace. It's not about standing on the table in the lunchroom and screaming. It's about just being in a relationship and loving people. That's what Share Christ Peace every day looks like. It's a smile. I am a to-do list guy. My wife has a to-do list and I love doing my to-do lists. I do. I'm, I'm a really odd dude in that way because I like, I like home fix-it projects. And this last couple of weeks, actually, I'm, I'm the dumb guy who decides to gut his bathroom on Holy Week, uh, the day before Easter. Yeah, I know. Go figure. And I started doing this project and as I was looking at it yesterday, I started thinking about how this story fits. You see, we, have a, we had a bathroom in our house uh, that was small, but it was functional. And it was good. It was nice. 
but we want something better. And I started tearing out the walls and I started tearing everything down. And yesterday or Friday when I actually got into the studs, I found out that there was three leaks in the pipes and had been going on for a while. And, and the joke I told my wife is, I have to fix this now. She goes, really? I said, yeah, because if you're showering in there, you're going to end up on the first floor and not be on the second floor because it's going to rot. She laughed. But the idea of that fits our faith life. You see, we're... We're, all of us, all people, are okay. We're good. We're fine. But something comes along that's going to tear us down. Something's going to come along that's just not right. And we're going to have to be gutted and taken down to the studs and fixed. That's where Jesus comes in for us. And that's where we as people can share Christ's peace with others to help them, to reform them, to make them something even more beautiful than they were. Just like the butterflies that we talked about last week, they start as one thing, but man, they're transformed into something even better. That, brothers and sisters, is what we get to do by sharing peace. Those smiles, those hugs, those handshakes, those how are you doings, where we are light of Jesus for others, that's the formation of sharing Christ's peace. I want you to do me a favor. I'd like you to pull out the Pew Bible in front of you, and I'd like you to turn to Acts uh, chapter 29. Acts chapter 29 in, in your Bible, because uh, I want to walk through that a little bit this morning. Acts 29. Well, if you can't find it, it's right after Acts 28. <laughs> what, I hear some laughter. Why? Are you, are you not finding it? <laughs> the book of Acts is all about the disciples growing the church. It's about the spreading of the gospel of Christ. Acts 29 is your chapter. It's the chapter that you write for Christ. It's the chapter that you're being sent to do. It's the chapter that God has called you to write in Scripture because it's, being, it's you being sent to spread the gospel. It's your story. That's why I have you look at Acts 29. And why do we want to share this? Because of 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are people belonging to God. That you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brothers and sisters, you are called, you are chosen into the family, and you've got a story to tell. So share it in any way you can. Confirmands, share that story. Live that story and be that light. And you too, share Christ's peace with a smile, with a hug, or with a just, how you doing? Because that's being Jesus to others. And all God's people said, Amen.